Well, I started writing um, probably when I was about seven years old. You know, early on, as I can remember, I, I aspired to be some sort of writer or other. But I would say most of the writing that I did was in the realm of songwriting, because I'm, I'm a musician and I wrote almost non-stop. I'm a rock musician, I always have been. I, I needed to earn a living. And I, somebody that I had known uh, in New York had started his own rock magazine. This is sort of funny, this 1976, he, he assigned me to go interview a band that was new that I, of course, had never heard of, called the Ramones. So, I, I first had to go to CBGB's and, and watch them play, and yeah, of course, they were incredible. So it was great. And, uh, but they, were, they kind of scared me. I mean, they were like, I totally bought their thuggish image, you know? It turned out that their manager, Danny Fields, was sitting there sort of supervising the whole thing. And he took my number, and then he called me later and complimented me and said I did a good job. And he ended up really help, being really helpful to me. He said, like, what editors do you know? And I said, none. And he said, well, I can help you there. And he got on the phone with, you know, the guy at uh, Circus Magazine and Cream, Billy Altman, and I um, forget who else. But he, he, he opened a lot of doors for me. So within, like, a couple of months, I was writing lots of... Um, record reviews, concert reviews, and, and uh, profiles. And so I was just lucky to be there at the time. And I was living down in Soho when it was affordable. And just uh, in, in a loft, I was sharing a loft with a friend that was just about a 15 minute walk to CBGB. So I, I would go over there every night and see like Blondie, Talking Heads, Television, The Ramones, Patti Smith, um, The Dead Boys, and whoever was there. And then I would interview them. And they were like, you know, kind of nobodies then, but um, obviously they were doing something new and something cool. And at that time, there weren't that many people writing about them. So some of those articles that I did back then were among the very first pieces that were published about these bands. And I didn't even think back then that they would really last or survive or become legendary. Yeah, so my validation came from seeing my work in print. And what was fun was unlike, you know, the movie business, where it takes years to, if you're lucky enough to ever get a movie made. Um, you would write an article, you drop it off at the office or mail it to, to your editor, and uh, a month later it would be the, in the magazine with your byline, and that was really exciting. But you could uh, just have fun with it, you know. And so um, it was sort of creative in that sense, because there was no s structure to it and no formula. And in a way, the more original you were with your um, writing and the, you know, the format, the, the better, and, and you could make a reputation that way just by being a, sort of new and original. And then as, as, as the age of 30 started to loom at that point, uh, and it was clear that I was not going to like be a rock star, a friend of mine, a guy that I had gone to college with at UC Berkeley, came to New York and he took me out to lunch and he said to me, um, hey, I don't know what you're doing right now, but you should just drop whatever you're doing and write a screenplay. And I was like, why? I mean, what? How could I do that? And he said, um, trust me, you know, it's not that hard. If you have any ability um, to tell a story, I promise you, you'll find work and I'll help you. But I needed, again, I needed money to be making money while I wrote the screenplay. So I, I got a job as a word processor at a life insurance company. And while I was working, uh, writing like letters of denial to ins insured like, people who, uh, to explain why we weren't going to pay pay their claims. I, um, I was also writing this screenplay. It was kind of scary because I was always afraid of getting caught and fired and also um, not finish, being able to finish the screenplay. But I eventually did. And I gave it to my friend out here. I mailed it to him. He gave it to his agent out here. She like forgot about it. It took her like six months. But then she read it and, re and really liked it and, and told me she thought she could sell it, which amazed me. And she did, she sold it to Warner Brothers. So, you know, once I started working out in LA, I got, first of all, I got super, super lucky. My first, like, five years in the business, I got a lot of breaks. Um, you know, found myself working with, with Spielberg, and I was offered just all kinds of stuff. I, you know, I ended up doing a movie with Mike Nichols, and, uh, you know, ended up a, a very much in-demand um, script doctor. I, I worked with Tim Burton on uh, Batman Returns. Um, I was, you know, later working with John Woo. I worked on um, Mission Impossible 2. I worked on Face Off for him. So I was uh, just sort of one of the 
go-to writers for like a good 10 years, I guess, and that was really fun. But I also started to feel after a while a little bored of that too, because I, f I felt like, for one, I, I, I had been pigeonholed like most writers do, uh, writing thrillers, which was fine, I guess, up to an extent, but after a while it got a little tedious, and I felt like there was other stuff I wanted to do. I was tired of writing, you know, suspense sequences and that kind of thing. I wanted to do something that was less formulaic, I think. And maybe I was a little spoiled too, because I, I had all this, you know, really quick success out here. So once again, my old um, ambition to be a novelist sort of resurfaced. And I actually had an idea for a novel that, I, that had sort of just come to me almost by accident. I, I concluded that I was going to take off a year and turn down any work that might come my way and just uh, spend that year doing at least the first draft of a novel. And that was fun. It was exciting. I learned, the, I learned that the book industry is sort of just as bad as the movie industry in its own way. You know, it was a fun experiment. And I think what, what, what was really interesting about it was it, it's a very different approach to writing than screenwriting. I mean, especially if you have literary ambitions, it's much more expansive. And I really enjoyed that because instead of lying awake wondering what I could cut, which is what I do as a screenwriter, I, I, I found myself lying awake thinking about, oh, I could add to that. That's really interesting. I love that theme or I love that setting or that scene. Uh, and tomorrow I'm going to add five more pages to that. But it, it was also a lot of work. And, and in the end, I, I kind of felt like, at least for as long as I still have a career in Hollywood as a screenwriter, I should devote myself to that and, and not, I couldn't really necessarily afford the luxury of doing too many more you know, vacations in screenwriting or I might one day find myself out of, out of a job. <laughs>